Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now, to one of the approaches that which uh, the closures are introduced in this is by the introduction of the concept of eddy viscosity. Now, I am using, I am doing all these things because of course, if you want to do turbulent combustion, suppose you want to solve a turbulent combustion inside an engine, you have to solve the flow also. Unlike in the in the laminar flames where we were discussing like uh, we were approximating the entire flow by that uh, pressure gradient is small and the, by the country the rho u is equal to rho u. So, uh, uh, rho 1 e 1 is equal to rho 2 u 2 and here of course, you have to consider the detailed flow and to model the detailed flow this uh, Reynolds average Navier Stokes equation or this Fabry average Navier Stokes equation is one of the um, uh, one of the possibilities and uh, of course, we will introduce the combustion models, but at least to uh, for the first thing that you need you have to solve the average continuity equation and the average uh, uh, momentum equation. So, that is why we are doing all these things. So, this is here uh, essentially solution of the momentum equation or the average momentum equation you cannot uh, simplify it and you have to solve it along with the uh, your combustion equations. So, that is one important thing in turbulence that you should keep in mind. So, here we introduce this k epsilon model. where we introduce the concept of introducing the concept of eddy viscosity this Reynolds stress terms which was the inside of the was this. So, this Reynolds stress terms were this. And of course, we had a gradient in front like that. Now, if we call this as Reynolds stress, then we model that by the following. Nu t, this is just a model uh, under the So, here the strain rate tensor is essentially Fabry averaged. This I is an unit tensor. Okay. So, this is how you introduce this thing minus there is a two third. Okay whereas k is the uh, turbulent kinetic energy Fabry averaged. So, this term is essentially equal to you can write it as um, v i v j double prime double prime this thing. Okay. So, here it is written in this uh, simplified form, but actually it includes both the cross terms also. So, essentially this is a tensor this left hand side whereas k is actually a scalar because of this thing because k is defined as that is the Fabry average turbulent kinetic energy is defined as this way. Fabry average turbulent kinetic energy is defined as k tilde is equal to half v i double prime v i double prime to tilde. Okay. So, this is a scalar defined at a point whereas, this is a tensor. Okay. Of course, scalar is also a 0 th order tensor. Uh, so, anyways, but this is a full uh, it is a second order tensor with the 9 elements inside it this Reynolds stress. Now, this uh, we can define this nu t 
which is essentially a, a, a kinematic eddy viscosity. So, you see what we have done here, we have taken this Reynolds system and say that it is essentially directly proportional to the uh, uh, Fabry average standard tensor and this proportional to constant is essentially this thing called the um, uh, new t is essentially which is the eddy viscosity. Okay. So, this is the uh, important concept of eddy viscosity and that is needed because you found that way when we do the uh, when we introduce the Fabry averaging in the Navier-Stokes equation, uh, we are basically left with this term which does not have any closure. So, of course, uh, this appears elsewhere. So, you and uh, in the uh, in the in this thing itself also. So, as you see here. Um, so, essentially you will have strain rate inside this. So, the and if this term is essentially proportional to the uh, this uh, what is inside is essentially proportional to the nu t times the strain rate tensor, then this can be coupled with this term which contains the normal viscosity and then we can uh, add the effective viscosity, we uh, can add the normal visco kinematic viscosity and this eddy viscosity together to basically form a uh, effective viscosity. But typically in turbulent flows, I mean the effect of viscosity in normal viscosity in this will be much smaller than the uh, turbulent viscosity, turbulent eddy viscosity. So, this is how the uh, how the modeling is uh, introduced. This is the first modeling that we introduced here that is uh, in the K epsilon model and um, we have not gone into the K epsilon model yet. Uh, we will come to that uh, because this is still uh, we will see how to uh, basically do um, uh, this because uh, you see that we have uh, still this term that is a K uh, uh, equation um, uh, which we need to basically have a model have an equation for. So, to close this um, this is uh, so this is the bottom line is that this is still not closed because you have k. So, we need an equation for the governing equation for k tilde that is the Fabry average uh, turbulent kinetic energy okay, and this will be given by uh, the following. Now, before that uh, we can write down nu t as essentially c mu uh, times k tilde square by mean epsilon whereas c mu the value is taken typically to be about 0 0.09. Okay. So, that is the uh, the thing. Now, so of course, you see that we have uh, got then two terms uh, in nu t itself if you put here uh, and this goes into this whole thing goes into the this uh, average Navier-Stokes equation. So, essentially you get a uh, uh, get two more terms that is k and epsilon. So, we need to an uh, closure for those and those closures are essentially provided by the, the k epsilon model because you have k and epsilon here. So, that uh, we have a governing equation of turbulent kinetic energy which can be exactly derived just like the way we derived it in the previous class um, where for uh, of course, for for that was for uh, constant density flows. Mm, so, this is little more complicated, uh, but uh, the basic essence is similar. On the left hand side, we have the transport of K. Is equal to mean density Reynolds average sigma k it is essentially a model constant times nu t grad k tilde minus v prime v prime double dashed Reynolds test terms contracted with divergence gradient of v tilde minus mean of density times dissipation. Okay. So, essentially this is the uh, which what we have is essentially is the production term and uh, this is the dissipation term in the turbulent kinetic energy. So, uh, and of course, as you remember in the production term you had the uh, this was preceded with the with the Reynolds stress terms and uh, then you have the velocity gradient uh, uh, um, uh, we have the, the, the velocity gradients. So, you get uh, similar things here um, all right. Uh, uh, here also. Okay. So, uh, that is uh, the point uh, that is uh, uh, this this equation that is the, the, the kinetic energy equation the kinetic energy transport equation which you essentially need to have a closure for the previous uh, Reynolds test terms uh, or the, the eddy viscosity closure. So, which you need for this uh, 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 itself. Uh, so, for that uh, is it can be is an essentially an exact equation with some um, uh, model constants because of the introduction of these things. Okay. But uh, this the next equation is uh, that is the that is this epsilon equation of our turbulent uh, 
uh, or TK dissipation turbulent mean uh, turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate. Mm. This equation this is an essential an ad hoc equation and there is no direct uh, uh, reason uh, direct ab initio you cannot uh, we cannot derive this ab initio and rather this comes from the um, uh, fact that th this uh, dissipation is should also look similar uh, similar to the previous equation. So, that is this uh, this uh, term. is equal to divergence of mean density nu t. So, this is once again this is an uh, ad hoc equation which is required for closure and uh, but this uh, works well in certain flows like turbulent shear flows even density varying to some extent. Of course, as you see that because the modeling thing it has a lot of ad hoc uh, constants. And here you have uh, sigma k is equal to 1.0, these are the different model constants that are typically used in commercial softwares. So, uh, to summarize uh, as you see that when you uh, of course, when you uh, you have basically here we are trying to deal with the flow. So, uh, to deal with the flow you need to at least you need to solve two equations that is you need to solve the continuity equation and you need to solve the uh, uh, you need to solve the momentum equation. So, um, in non reacting flows of course, uh, when constant energy flows in CFD you directly do not solve the continuity equation it is uh, comes from the, the pressure portion equation uh, from the momentum equation itself and then you uh, then you implement the, um, uh, the divergence of V equal to 0 criteria, but in, uh, in density varying flows typically you solve the continuity as well as the momentum equations mm, and uh, then uh, in an average form and of course, uh, in an average form continuity equation does not have any problem as you saw um, that is it can be this is the form of the average uh, continuity equation with Fabry variables, uh, Fabry average variables and uh, then uh, when you introduce um, the uh, then when you do the same thing for the momentum equation you see that of course, uh, this uh, Reynolds systems emerging from the um, uh, emerging from this uh, the nonlinear or uh, the convective uh, acceleration term, and uh, then you have this um, emergence of this Reynolds stress terms which are not closed. So to close them, we introduce this uh, this uh, model, um, uh, which is which is essentially says that this Reynolds stress terms is essentially proportional to the strain net, the Fabry averaged uh, the Fabry averaged Reynolds stress terms is essentially proportional to the strain net tensor, and um, that is uh, the Fabry averaged Reynolds stress tensor is essentially proportional to the um, uh, to the uh, Fabry averaged Reynolds uh, Fabry averaged uh, strain net tensor. And uh, then that is that proportionality constant is given by something called the AD viscosity. Okay. Now, AD viscosity introduced has of course, this k square tilde divided by epsilon uh, which can be defined in this form and then of course, you need to solve for uh, you this case k and epsilon are unclosed and that leads to the introduction of this. Um, of this uh, turbulent kinetic energy or this k epsilon model, where we have two equations for the uh, for the um, turbulent kinetic energy and uh, where we have one equation for uh, the evolution of turbulent kinetic energy and one equation for the evolution of the turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate. Um, of course, uh, the for the turbulent kinetic energy evolution equation that can be derived in a very systematic manner as we have did previously, uh, which leads to the uh, sh which, which shows us the, 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 the production and the dissipation term. But then uh, the, there is no such governing equations for uh, turbulent uh, kinetic energy dissipation rate at least in the in the scope of uh, that uh, the k epsilon model and then le that leads to the introduction of this epsilon model in an ad hoc manner and uh, which leads to several model constants. But at least with this framework mm, uh, I mean uh, it works well for uh, essentially for um, uh, like a, a turbulent jet or other shear flows it does not work too well for density varying uh, turbulent jets. Uh, but uh, Especially there are other problems with non-reacting flows, but at least this gives us, uh, us an idea about uh, how we can approach um, 
uh, how can I approach a turbulent combustion modeling. At least the flow part is can be settled uh, to some extent with this, uh, with this RANS models. Mm, of course, there can be more elaborate models like large eddy simulation, etc. but that we will not uh, go right now. So, uh, up to this point we have had a very solid, uh, mm, we have uh, shown you that uh, to model the flow. Um, at least uh, you have the uh, the continuity and the and the uh, average momentum equation and for the uh, to close the average momentum equation you need the um, uh, this eddy viscosity closer and for the eddy viscosity closer you need the uh, the Fabry average turbulent kinetic energy equation and the dissipation equation but at this with this the flow can be uh, flow can be uh, described of course you cannot describe the flow totally now uh, still because you don't have know the density and density is of course dependent on temperature and that is how essentially the the combustion couples with uh, turbulence through essentially this density variation at one level. That is combustion creates heat release, heat release uh, create increases temp temperature, temperature reduces density and density goes into your continuity and your momentum equation. So, this is one level, level of coupling. Of course, you will see that this leads to other level of coupling also because um, it uh, because combustion uh, is essentially leads to consumption of the species and that uh, has uh, other uh, sorts of couplings and through how it couples with temperature. So, that we will come uh, in this form, but now at least we have the flow sorted out. Okay. So, now we will go into uh, because this is a turbulent combustion course, we will go into essentially we will go into looking uh, for the we will go back to the species and temperature equations and um, we will see how we can tackle those and if those can be tackled in these um, manners in manners which is similar to the uh, to the eddy viscosity type of closures. We will see that these are more problematic it uh, this eddy uh, there are more uh, uh, complexities that arise when you uh, try to apply this kind of closures for the temperature and the species equation, but we will have to deal with that. Okay. So, let us go into the temperature and the species equations. So, if we reconsider the the energy equation in T form that is and with the assumption that that your C p i is equal to C p your p is equal to constant and your Q radiation is equal to 0. So, we arrive at a simplified temperature equation which we devised uh, which we obtained previously from the um, enthalpy equation essentially. Left hand side uh, uh, temporal term convection term plus diffusion term thermal diffusivity plus heat release rate. And the heat release rate is of course given by number of species enthalpy of formation reaction rate or the consum or the production and uh, destruction of that species. And similarly, the species equation is this one. These parts are mainly from uh, but we do not follow uh, Law's book anymore. We are essentially going uh, into Peters's book and uh, Peters's lecture notes. So you can, uh, if you want to read more about this, you can find this in uh, Peters's book, Turbulent Combustion. Whereas we have assumed that dIj is equal to dI, okay, and this is of course the corresponding species production and consumption or consumption rate. Okay. Now, uh, what we will do is that in the following we will use this term called reactive scalar. Okay. So, reactive scalar is nothing but a vector which contains the mass fraction of all the chemical species and temperature. Okay. So, reactive scalar of course, as you see these are not passive scalars because you have got source terms um, uh, here, here uh, in or see or source or same terms in these things. So, these are not passive scalars, these are reactive scalars and furthermore this also couples with the flow directly because of the density variation. 
Okay. So, this reactive scalar given by xi i is equal to y 1, y 2, y n and t. Okay. So, there are n plus 1 reactive scalars. So, this uh, reactive scalar is the vector. Okay. Now, uh, based on these equations, we can write one governing equation for a reactive scalar which is given by this form which is essentially um, just simplifying these two equations in this form. Now, for of course, so i is equal to 1 to n d i is d i, but for n plus 1 d i is essentially alpha w n plus 1 or we write it like this d n plus 1 is equal to alpha w n plus 1 is equal to w t which is the heat release rate minus 1 by C p times summation i is equal to 1 to n h i is not w i. Okay. Now, so these are our governing equations for the reactive scalar for both the uh, species as well as temperature. So, how can we apply can the question is can we apply this kind of averaging techniques that we applied for the continuity as well as the momentum equations into these equations of the reactive scalar itself. Okay, and that will be very attractive. Okay, then we can just only solve for the average flow, and of course, if required for the variance flow, where variance of these uh, quantities also, and then we have a very good understanding of entire things. So, but it turns out things are not so simple. As such, even in the previous case, when you introduce this concept of eddy viscosity, that has some limitations itself. That does not work too well because you are essentially mapping one tensor, which is this uh, the Reynolds stress tensor, to the uh, to the uh, to the strain rate tensor through one scalar, which is this new t. So there is there are problems. So that does not work too well. But you will see that even if you can have a reasonably good description of the flow, the problem here are even more fundamental when you try to do the averaging concepts for this. But then we still keep on improving the models, and we'll see how how the models are done. And we need to have a very good understanding of uh, this uh, how this model works because this averaging of this uh, averaged form of this. Uh, uh, this uh, continuity average form of the momentum and average form of the of the um, of the uh, of these equations um, of this reactive scalar equation and temperature equation are very much used in the industry especially if you are a combustor designer or a uh, or an engine uh, aero engine designer uh, so we really need to know what are the things and uh, what are the models what are the problems with that models what are the problems with averaging and uh, how we can improve those kind of uh, things so that is the motivation for all this class okay now let's go into the uh, this averaging this uh, uh, this uh, this reactive scalars um, uh, in different uh, uh, forms and uh, basically this approach will be called the uh, moment of moment methods for average scalars.